As celebrations continue in Berlin tonight, East Germany is preparing to reform and find a new government. Parliament meets tomorrow and is expected to back the new leader, Egon Krenz, by appointing the moderate Hans Modro as Prime Minister. A special conference will be held next month to discuss the party's future. The East German people have been calling for free elections and for an end to the communists' monopoly. Meanwhile, the mayors of East and West Berlin have greeted one another in Potsdamer Square to open a new crossing point through the wall. More than three million East Germans have crossed the border since Thursday night. Many have spent their time shopping. They're still coming in droves. 3.3 million travel visas have been issued since Thursday. A fifth of East Germany is desperate to visit the West. They're not coming to stay, the vast majority of them. They're coming for the experience. Many are here to window shop and a few to buy. West Berlin streets are teeming with them and businessmen have welcomed them with open arms. Shops stayed open on a Sunday and for the first time were accepting communist marks. But the East Germans are finding their currency isn't going far. Ten marks for every one Deutsche Mark. They also get their hundred Deutsche Marks, so-called welcoming money from the West German government. That quickly goes on cheap clothes, watches and electronic goods. And they're still knocking down gaps in the wall. This is the sixth so far. The rubble is quickly claimed as prized souvenirs. By far the most significant was the crossing point established in the early Sunday hours at the huge Potsdamer Platz. Berlin's commercial heart in pre-war days and the then playground for the affluent teeming with nightlife. When the East German troops and workers finally knocked a hole through the reinforced concrete, it was teeming with people, led by the city's western mayor and his counterpart from the east. Their greeting, only a stone throw from the bunker where Hitler shot himself in 1945, was symbolic of these historic times. East and West Berlin has had to be held back by East and West policemen linking arms. The West Berlin mayor appealed for calm, but pandemonium soon broke out as Berliners rushed to greet each other for the first time in a generation. In a moment of light-heartedness, a four-year-old circus bear called Paula was led up to the wall. The bear is the symbol of Berlin, both East and West. It's been just as crowded underground. 30-mile-long traffic jams prompted many to head for the underground railway system that had been sealed for three decades. Border guards, customs men and railway clerks were swamped as a generation of Berliners shuttled back and forth under the wall for the first time. It's not always a joyful time, particularly for the miserable East German border guards deployed on the wall throughout the freezing nights. They stand cold and stony-faced as crowds taunt them from the western side. They're sitting ducks for bottles and stones too, so the West German riot police, not renowned for their restraint, keep a tight watch. There are some West Berliners who are hoping the staff of the Business Week will bring them some respite from streets teeming with people by day and partying by night. One thing's for sure, weekends in Berlin will never be the same. Scott Chisholm, Sky News, Berlin. Well, since the border was opened three days ago, about a fifth of the East German population has picked up visas to travel to the West. Many of them gathered with West Germans for a free rock concert today to see international stars like Joe Cocker join German bands on the stage. Others attended church services to give prayers of thanks. John Cookson reports from Berlin. Sunday in West Berlin and a united city has been joining together in a celebration of freedom. They converged on the old and new Kaiser Wilhelm churches, Berlin's war memorial. The service was held in the new church, built the same year as the Berlin Wall, 1961. And many found themselves locked out, such was the size of the congregation. These churches are truly the heart of West Berlin, built as a memorial to everyone who perished in World War II. Thanks were given for the events of an historic week in Germany, a theme taken up by President Weizsäcker. His address was more spiritual than political. He called on West Germans to learn from what had happened in the East and not to look down on the East Berliners. His message seemed to touch the right spot with the average man and woman in the street. I totally agree with him because, I mean, the great thing is that all of a sudden we can be together and we are just one people and, and somehow it's just great that everybody can join. And it's stupid for us in our big cars to think, oh, we are the big ones. But the important thing is that 
we can talk and we can speak and not that they can buy things and we can give them money or anything. Outside the church, West Germany's biggest food chain is giving away free coffee and chocolate. It might just as well have been gold bars. The crush of East Berliners for these luxury handouts was immense. Thousands of Berliners have been flocking to an East-West rock concert as pop celebrates the barriers being torn down. Joe Cocker raised the roof with an emotional version of With a Little Help from My Friends. I couldn't see all this coming down so fast. You know, I, mean, I was hoping in a little while, but, uh, you know, amazing. Why did you come here? <laughs> well, I said, I, I should have taken Germany to heart. Well, they took me to heart. I mean, since 79, I've been touring here. And uh, we finally got to play East Berlin in the Dresden this year. It's a huge crowd. Both East and West Germany face huge questions about their future. But for now, in Berlin, the party goes on. John Cookson, Sky News, West Berlin. Although the East German leader, Egon Krenz, has scorned the possibility of a united Germany, the Communist Party leadership has bowed to pressure to hold a special meeting next month on the party's future. And world leaders have been almost unanimous in their encouragement and praise for the redrawing of the German political map. The momentum of political developments was maintained today when East Germany's communist leadership gave way to popular pressure to hold a special congress next month on the party's future. What had been planned as a routine conference will now put the party's political complexion and its flagging authority under the microscope, and plenty of awkward questions will be asked. Amid the continuing scenes of delight in the streets of Berlin, political attitudes to the new reality are gradually taking shape. Egon Krenz has ruled out the possibility of German reunification, favoured by the West German Chancellor Helmut Kohl. The two men have spoken several times on the phone since the barriers between East and West Berlin were thrown open last Thursday. But when they meet shortly, there'll still be a political wall to surmount. Kohl is asking for free elections in East Germany and a relaxation of media control as the price for an extensive package of economic aid. Krenz insists that East Germany's socialist system will not be compromised. A reunification may in fact be a short-term possibility because the present revolution, peaceful revolution in East Germany, is in fact population-led. And if Krenz does not satisfy the aspirations of the East German population, he'll be swept away and a much more radical leader will in fact be appointed. Now in fact he may go uh, into a very close economic relationship with West Germany. If that happens, then the two German states could in fact come together very quickly, uh, say within five years. The historic events in Berlin received the wholehearted support of the Soviet leader, Mikhail Gorbachev, who sent a message to President Bush expressing his approval of the opening of the wall. The Soviet Foreign Ministry spokesman, Gennady Gerasimov, summed up the official Soviet response. I guess it has so many holes now. Of course you can take it down. Because uh, actually it is now not there. For his part, the American president echoed remarkably similar sentiments while addressing relatives of Vietnam War victims in Texas. Look to the very heart of Europe, to Berlin, and you will see a great truth shining brighter with each passing day. The quest for freedom is stronger than steel, more permanent than concrete. Meanwhile, Berliners were chipping away at the old divide between East and West on another day of Germany's revolution in the making. Peter Godfrey, Sky...